Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It's our 10th lesson on the fifth topic of Home 3 Work, which is called Current Electricity 2. As usual, let me comment by giving the quote of the day, which states that the door will be opened for those who are bold enough to knock it. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we're looking at the difference between electromotive force, that is, and the internal resistance. So let's start by defining what we mean by electromotive force and also the terminal voltage, although we defined them in form one, that is under cells and simple circuits. So we did say that electromotive force denoted by capital E simply refers to the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when it is supplying no charge. Alternatively, potential electromotive force can also be defined as the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when the circuit is open. Remember when the circuit is open, it simply means that no charge is flowing through or no current is flowing through that particular circuit, such as the one uh, shown here. Then terminal voltage, denoted by capital B, simply refers to the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when it is supplying charge or when charge is flowing through that particular circuit. Alternatively, we can also define terminal voltage as simply the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when it is that is when the circuit is closed. Remember when the circuit is closed, it simply means that a current or charge is flowing through that particular circuit, such as the one shown here. You can see our switch in this case is closed, but for the first case, our switch is actually opened, meaning that no current or no charge is flowing through the circuit. Now, a cell is usually made up of materials that offer some resistance to the flow of current. So this resistance is what we call the internal resistance of the cell or internal resistance of the battery. Remember that uh, when you arrange maybe three or four cells or three or more cells or two or more cells in series, they usually form a battery. That's why we are uh, preserving this definition for internal resistance. We are specifying we can either be for a cell or a battery because a cell is simply a battery is simply a combination of cells which are arranged in most cases in series so uh, usually a cell is made up of some materials for example we have the covering materials we have some insulating materials within that particular cell so those materials usually offer some resistance to the flow of current or the flow of charge so that resistance which is offered by the material uh, from which the cell is made up of those, that resistance is what we call the internal resistance of that particular cell and it is usually denoted by small r. Then, if a resistor r is connected in series with a cell, then the internal resistance of the cell r, that is small r, is usually considered to be connected in series with the external resistor r, that is as shown in this diagram. So if you connect a cell, if you connect a cell in series, with an external resistor R, then the internal resistance of that particular cell, that is small r, will be considered to be connected in series with the external resistor R. So let's consider a cell here which has an EMF E, internal resistance R, connected to an external resistor capital R, and uh, if we have the current, a total current of I flowing through that particular circuit. Remember, this table still applies that for any series uh, connection, I total is equals I1 is equals I2, V total is equals to V1 plus V2, R total is the sum of the resistances. Then for any parallel connection, I total is equals I1 plus I2, V total is equals to V1 is equals V2, then 1 over R total is equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Then we shall also need the Ohm's law, that is voltage is equals to the product of current and the resistance. In this case, we are talking of yeah, the resistance, it can be the internal resistance or the external resistance. Now, if we want to find the total voltage through this particular cell, remember, uh, we have said that if a resistor R is connected in series with a cell, then the internal resistance of that particular cell R will be considered to be connected also in series with the external resistor R. So consider this external resistor here, which is connected in series with our cell. So remember, this is our cell then this is the internal resistance. Remember, it is called internal resistance because it is offered internally or it is the resistance which is offered by actually the materials which are making that particular cell. So we'll consider this ex internal resistor to be connected in series with the external resistor. So that means we shall be using the values for series connection. 
So if we want to find the total voltage through uh, this particular circuit, that must be equal to uh, the sum of the voltage drop at the internal resistor R and also the sum of the uh, voltage drop at the external resistor R. Because remember for any series connection, V total is equals to the sum, that is V1 plus V2 uh, plus V3 depending with the number of uh, the resistors that you have or the components that you have. So because we are talking of series connection, V total will be equal to V1 plus V2. So that simply means that the EMF or the total uh, voltage through this particular cell will be equal to the voltage drop at the external resistor plus the voltage drop at the internal resistor so that this uh, relationship is obeyed. So the total voltage, which is just the same as the EMF of that particular cell, will be equal to the sum of the voltage drop at the external resistor R, that is potential difference across R, plus the voltage drop at the internal resistor R, so plus potential difference across the internal resistor R. Then the potential difference across the external resistor R is what we are calling the terminal voltage, that is the voltage that drops at an, an, at an external component which is connected to a cell. So this is what we are calling the terminal voltage or the potential difference across the external resistor R. Then the potential difference across the internal resistor R, that one we call it the lost voltage because that is the voltage that gets lost to the materials that are making that particular cell. Therefore, that voltage is lost and we call it the lost voltage. Therefore, um, but from Ohm's law, we know that V is equals to IR. Therefore, if I want the potential difference of the terminal voltage across resistor R, I'll simply take the current through resistor R times the resistance through uh, the external resistor R. And remember that because R is connected in series with uh, the battery or with the cell, and we know that for any series connection, I total must be equal to I1, must be equal to I2, it simply means that the current flowing through the external resistor R is equal to the total uh, current through the circuit. Similarly, the current through the internal resistor R is equal to uh, the total current because for any series connection, I total must be equal to the current across each component. Therefore, the potential difference across R will simply be its current times the uh, its resistance, which is noted by capital R. Then the potential difference across the internal resistor R, we shall take again from Ohm's law V is equals to IR. We'll take the current through the internal resistor times it, the resistance of the internal uh, resistor. So again, the current, because the, inter the internal resistor is also considered to be in series with that particular uh, cell or battery, it simply means that for any series connection, I total is equals I1 is equals I2. So that means that the current through the internal resistor R is just equal to the total current through that particular circuit, which is I. Therefore, uh, V is equals IR, it shall become the current is simply the total current times the internal resistance, which is just small R. So this is the equation that we use to find the EMF of a cell, the EMF or the total, yeah, the EMF of a cell is given by IR plus I small r, that is uh, when we are including the internal resistance. Then from this particular equation, we know that from Ohm's law, voltage is equal to the product of current and resistance. Therefore, this equation can be written as I times R is just the same as the voltage V, that is the voltage through R. Therefore, I times R will just give us the voltage. So this equation, the EMF can also be given by voltage plus uh, current times, that is the total current times the internal resistance. Also, from the first equation, that is E is equals to I R plus I small r, we can make I to be the subject of the formula because remember the current is the same. I is just the I total. Uh, the current in this particular case is also the total current because for series connection I total is equals I1 is equals to I2. So because current is common I'll just factor it out. So if I factor it out current from the first equation I'll simply have I into R plus the internal resistance. So these are the three equations uh, that are used to find the EMF of a cell. Therefore the EMF of a cell or a battery E is given by either uh, the current, the total current times the external resistance plus the total current times the internal resistance. Alternatively, the EMF can also be given by the voltage through the external resistor plus the product of the total current and the internal resistance. EMF can also be given by the product of the total current through the circuit into bracket, that is the external resistance plus the internal resistor. So these are the three equations that we use to find the 
EMF of a given cell or a given number of cells or simply the EMF of a battery. We look at um, how to determine the internal resistance R of a cell. So there are two methods. So the first method, you just arrange the apparatus as shown in this particular diagram. Then of course, with your switch open, so you connect the apparatus as shown. Then after that, you close the switch and set the current to the minimum value possible. For example, you can set the current to a minimum value of zero amperes. Then from there, you will use the rheostat or the variable resistor to increase the current in steps. And then you tabulate the values of current I and the corresponding terminal voltage V. Remember to tabulate is just to record values in a table. So you use the rheostat or the variable resistor to increase the current in steps. For example, you can increase the current to 0.2 amperes, you record the corresponding voltmeter reading, you increase to 0.4, you record the corresponding voltmeter reading, you increase to 0.6, 0.8, and 1.0, recording the corresponding values of voltmeter reading. After that, you plot a graph of voltage V against current, so that graph, the expected graph is as, of, as shown here. So the graph of voltage V, of course, voltage in volts against current in amperes is as shown here. Then we want to know what each value of this particular uh, graph simply represents. So because the graph, the expected graph is a straight line graph, we shall compare that, uh, that graph to the equation of a straight line of a straight line. From mathematics, we know that equation of a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c. Of course, where m is the gradient of the graph and c is the y-intercept or the vertical intercept. And remember for this case, what is on our y-intercept or the vertical intercept is the V, that is uh, the terminal voltage. What is on our x-axis or the horizontal axis is the current. So we'll play, we'll play around with the equation of uh, the EMF until we, get, uh, we take it to the format of y is equals to mx plus c. So the aim is to obtain an equation whereby the y-axis or the value of y is V and the value of x is actually uh, I. So to achieve that, let's use, uh, we just derived these equations from our previous slide. So we said that EMF can be given by the external voltage V plus I times R. That is involving the internal resistor R. So I want to make uh, V to be the subject of the formula because remember my y-axis has V in this particular case. So I'll ensure that where I have Y, it is rhyming with V. So to achieve that, I'll take IR towards the left-hand side. So remember when IR crosses to the left-hand side, crosses the equal sign, it becomes a negative. So that we have negative IR plus E being equal to V. So this equation can as well be rewritten as, I just want to start with V, so that V is equal to negative IR plus E. Now I've uh, converted this equation in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. So you can see that V is equal to negative IR uh, plus E is in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. And you can see my Y is rhyming with V because V was on the vertical or on the Y axis. Then my X is rhyming with I because I was on the X or on the horizontal axis. So once the values are rhyming, you simply pick the values directly. So you can see that M, which is the gradient, shall be equal to the negative of internal resistance, the negative of internal resistance. So um, we can simply conclude that. Uh, and you can also see clearly that uh, E, that is the EMF, shall be equal to the value of the Y-intercept or the value of the V-intercept. So the Y-intercept or the V-intercept simply means a point where the graph cuts the V-axis or the vertical axis. So we can conclude that the voltage intercept gives the EMF. That is the EMF will be equal to the value of the voltage intercept here. So assuming, assuming that this particular graph was cutting the voltage intercept at a point three, that will simply means that the EMF of the cell used was actually three volts. So that is what it means. Then from here that um, negative R is equals to M. Remember M represents the gradient. So that simply shows us that the gradient or the slope of the graph gives the internal resistance R of the cell used. So you can see clearly that suppose the slope was negative one, that will simply mean that uh, you simply equate because E is equals to, that is a uh, negative R is equals to M and M is the gradient. So you'll simply have negative 
1 that is negative r being equal to the gradient so suppose the gradient of the graph or the slope was negative 1 you will simply say negative r is equal to negative 1 so of course if you divide both sides by uh, negative 1 that is negative you will end up with r being equal to 1 ohm so that is how we analyze the graph of v against i next so we look at the second method of determining the internal resistance of a cell. So you arrange the apparatus as shown in this particular diagram. Then of course you switch the circuit um, on or you close the circuit. Then after that you increase the current in steps from a minimum value. For example, you can start with the current when it is at zero, of course using the uh, rheostat or the variable resistor, this one here. You increase the current to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 and then to 0 0.6 so increase the current in steps from a minimum value of course as you tabulate them or you record them in a table then you tabulate the values of i and the corresponding values of v then using the equation remember from ohm's law we did say that uh, v is equals to ir so if you make r the subject of the formula from ohm's law you will get that r will be equal to v over the current so using r is equals to v over i you tabulate the values of r and the corresponding values of one over the current or one over i so you'll be given this table to fill that is if it is um in a practical situation so you'll be given this particular table so as you vary the values of current you record the corresponding uh, voltmeter reading in this table once you have all the values to obtain the value of r or the resistance you'll simply be taking v over I. For example, I have a value here. If I want to find uh, to fill the table here, I'll simply take the value of voltage here, which is 6, divided by the value of the current, which is that is 0 0.2. So if you take 6.0 divided by 0 0.2, you'll simply obtain a value of resistance of 3 ohm. So that is how we fill the table. Also, if you want to find 1 over I or 1 over the reciprocal of current, you'll just be taking 1 divided by the current. For example, in this, to obtain the value of 5, I simply took 1 divided by a current of 0 0.2. That is 1 over i. So 1 divided by 0 0.2, you'll actually obtain uh, 5. You'll obtain 5. Then after that, a graph of 1 over i against r is as shown below. So you'd be asked to plot a graph of 1 over i against the graph of against r. So when the graph of 1 over i against r is plotted, that graph will take this particular manner or it will be of this particular manner. So one over current, of course, the units is per ampere because we are taking one divided by the current. Then the resistance, of course, the unit is just the, uh, the ohm. So to analyze this particular graph, we'll have to uh, equate the equation because the, the graph is a straight line graph. We'll equate with the equation of a straight line graph, which is just y is equals to mx plus c from mathematics. Remember, we gave three formats of uh, the EMF. We said that EMF can also be given by IR plus IR. Therefore, from this particular case, I want to make 1 over I to be the subject of my formula because 1 over I is on the y-axis. And remember, the equation here is starting with Y. So to achieve that, the first thing I'll do, I'll divide both sides by I so that I, I obtain E over I. I obtain 1 over I on the uh, left-hand side. So if I divide through by i, I'll have e over i being equal to ir over i plus ir over i. So of course, i, that is the current, and the current will cancel in this case. Then the current here will also cancel with the current downward. So I remain with e over i being equal to i and i will cancel so that I remain with r alone. So r plus i and i cancel, I remain with the internal resistor r. Then from there, I want to divide both sides by E so that I eliminate, I, elim I, I just remain with 1 over I because 1 over I is on the Y axis and you can see the equation is also starting with Y. So if uh, to remove E from the left hand side, I'll simply multiply everything by the reciprocal of E. So times 1 over E times 1 over E times 1 over E, that is by each term. So I'll have E times E, they will just cancel out so that I remain with 1 over I, so 1 over I being equal to uh, 1 over E multiplied by R, which is just 1 over E times R, then plus 1 over E times R, I'll just obtain R over E. So you can see I have um, taken that equation to the form of Y is equals to MX plus C. Clearly you can see what is on my Y axis is 1 over I, that is from the graph. What is on my X axis is R, you can see my X is also rhyming with R. 
once the graphs are the same or once the equations are similar, you just pick the values directly. So from this particular equation, we can see that 1 over E will give you the gradient. 1 over, and remember E represents the EMF of the cell. So the reciprocal of the EMF of the cell will give you the gradient of that particular graph because M from mathematics represents the gradient. So 1 over E is equals to the gradient. Therefore, if you want to find the EMF of the cell or E, that is the EMF E, you simply take you find the gradient of this particular graph, then you find its reciprocal. So the EMF will be 1 over the gradient. Then if you want to find the internal resistance R of the cell, you can obtain it in two ways. The first way, you just extrapolate this graph. So remember the graph was reaching at this point. Huh? So you just extrapolate. To extrapolate is just to extend the line. Huh? We usually extend using the dotted lines because these values were not uh, in the table. In the table, you, the, you don't have any... Uh, negative values of R. So this is an extrapolation. So you just extend the graph uh, strictly. Then you observe at the point where it cuts the R axis. So the internal resistance can be obtained in two ways. One, by extrapolating the graph to cut the R axis, which gives R. So this value of R, suppose maybe the, if this graph uh, was cutting the R axis at maybe negative 1.5, you will simply say that the internal resistance of that cell is actually 1.5 ohm so the point here the point where the graph cuts the r axis the extrapolated graph cuts the r axis will be equal to the internal resistance of that cell alternatively you can also find the internal resistance of the cell uh, through the second way that is if the intercept on one over i axis is k then remember when we talk of the intercept of uh, one over i axis we are talking of the point where that line cuts the 1 over i axis and the 1 over i axis is actually the y axis or the vertical axis remember at 1 over i axis the value of r is actually zero so if the value of r is zero it simply means that the equation will simply become uh, r over e will be equal to k so the intercept of um, 1 over i axis should give you r over e r over e Remember from this relationship, R over E is equals to the vertical intercept or the C, which is the Y intercept. What is on our Y axis is 1 over E, so 1 over I, that is the current. So it means that the intercept or the value where this particular graph cuts the Y intercept or the 1 over I intercept, its value is K, that value must be equal to R over E. So that means, that's why we are saying that R over E is equals to K. So we are assuming that K is the value uh, at which that particular uh, graph cutted the 1 over E, 1 over I intercept. So R over E must be equal to K, courtesy of this relationship that the Y intercept must be equal to R over E. So R over E is equal to K, therefore the internal resistance R will simply be equal to uh, K times E. And remember E from our first equation, E was equal to the reciprocal of the gradient. So if I substitute E being equal to 1 over gradient, I'll simply have R being equal to k times 1 over the gradient. Therefore, the internal resistance can also be given by the k, that is the 1 over i intercept, times the reciprocal of the gradient. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that the door will be opened for those who are bold enough to knock it. So the quote is, um, is simply stressing the fact that nothing worthwhile can be achieved in life without putting in the effort so remember that in real life you must overcome some obstacles in order for you to get what you want and recall that no one uh, understands your dreams better than you therefore you must make a, a commitment with yourself to fight for your passion to fight for your dreams and also to fight for a better future for yourself because no one else can do that for you I, instead you can only do it yourself and lastly recall that Every day is a second chance to be better, uh, to better your life. Therefore, don't let yesterday's frustrations overshadow today's blessings. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Until next time.